Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Anthony Cummins. I'm a historical researcher and author. Please enjoy the video. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Midsummer and the festivals and how to celebrate Midsummer. Now, I'm not going to give you lots of lovely views of Sweden and all that, which I'm sure you've probably hoped to see in this video, but stick with me because while those videos are ace, I'm actually going to describe why you should be celebrating Midsummer. So stick with it, even though I don't have pretty Swedish landscapes. So before that, basically, all my videos are done to support my work. So please get yourself a copy of this, How to Be a Modern Samurai, and uh, have a read, see what you think. Okay, to the video. So, basically, midsummer. The first thing you've got to realise is, is that it's over about a week of, uh, and a bit more than a week of celebrations. And what you're celebrating, obviously, the height of summer, the middle of summer. And you're actually celebrating when la um, the days start getting darker. It's common misconception that summer brings lighter nights. It's actually pretty much the start of the decline. But the reason that this is people get this confused is because, of course, it's the period of the longest time. Now, you've got three astronomical dates to think about here. You've got the spring equinox, you've got the summer solstice, and you've got the winter equinox. And sort of between them, that's your rising into... So the spring equinox is your rising into the lighter nights, with the peak at the summer solstice, and then it starts to decline into the autumn equinox, which is sort of your, your decline into dark days. And it's the same reverse the other way for winter. You know, it goes to the darkest time, back up to light, and it goes back round again. That's why sometimes you will see wheels used at... Um, so at midsummer, because midsummer actually is about the rotation of the sun. So sometimes you'll see things being rolled like wheels, but we'll get onto that if I remember. So the first date you've got to really be aware of is the 20th to the 21st of June. There, that is the summer solstice. This means that it is the day where the sun is rising or uh, the sun is rising over the horizon at the earliest time usually depending on where you are of course in the globe it can be like four o'clock in the morning obviously if you're north that's a different thing but you you know for europeans americans you can almost four in the morning it's rising and it's also the time that it actually sets the latest so uh you've got the longest hours of daylight however this is not midsummer's day it is not midsummer's day Midsummer's Day actually comes after that. So your first port of call is to check the summer solstice and watch the sunrise, watch the sunset around those days, the 20, 21st of June, and be aware that's the longest day and get out there, have parties, barbecues and relax and go into an open field and enjoy yourself. But basically be outside for that day because it's the longest day of the year and it's the time you should really be um, thankful, if you like, for the sun's blessing, which is the sky father in ancient um, Indo-European times. The sky father's out for the, the longest time before he starts dipping below the horizon more and more each day. Okay, so that's the first point of Midsummer done. Now, the second point is actually Midsummer's Eve. Now, Midsummer's Day is the 24th of June, roughly. This changes depending on which European culture you're in, but on the whole, you're looking around this time. So there's two things to be aware of here. Is Midsummer's Eve is about the 23rd of June, uh, 23rd of June, 23rd of June, and Midsummer's Day is uh, the 24th of June. Now, this was an old celebration but it was adopted by christianity to become um, the feast of saint john the baptist day be careful it's saint john the baptist there is another saint but saint john the baptist day now he paves the way for jesus christ basically so what you get is on midsummer's eve you are celebrating the eve of john the baptist day and on midsummer's day you are celebrating john the baptist day himself so on the 23rd of june what you should be doing is this so this day, you should be basically outside having a fire. Now, in ancient times, they used to have what something called a bone fire, a wake fire and a St. John the Baptist fire. A bone fire consists mainly of bones. Obviously, I think you need a fuel to burn it. A wake fire consists of wood and a St. John the Baptist contains wood, bones, mixture and all that. What exactly burns the bones? I'm not quite sure. There must be a fuel mixture there. Um, but the point being is that it is considered, the, and now this is my theory, it's considered it's the beginning of dark nights. Remember, you're not celebrating 
the beginning of light night should be celebrating the beginning of dark night even though it's the lightest night of the year it's going to start going down so darkness involves creatures monsters ghouls goblins and all that sort of stuff so you're burning bones because it's said that bones will the smell of burning bones will get rid of evil creatures now this apparently includes dragons um now i've been getting a lot of my information from this the english year by uh steve Roud, and it's a superb book if you can get your hands on that it's superb now he just say the connection to um witches and all that is a little bit unsure but i've looked in other sources and they seem to think it is so it's a bit of a debate and some sources have caught with the 1300s that they still were worried about dragons so they burnt these bones and that's possibly where we get the word um bone fire bonfire some people say it comes from the french bon la bon fire some people say it comes from bone fire um meaning to burn these bones now, this is all so the time you should be looking at Holy Well Springs. Now, if you live where I used to live, where I was brought up, uh, I'm from Manchester, Lancashire, but right across from us is Derbyshire, and they have the well spring dressing. So lots of well springs were all dressed wonderfully with flowers. You also get something called, um, I think they're called Mayday Cushions, which are seats which have like studded with clay and flowers and all decorated. I don't think you're meant to sit in them. Uh, sometimes you'll get outdoor preaching so go outdoors and go to church obviously you're meant to go to church and all that but basically the 23rd is for you to get rid of goblins demons to get to holy springs and holy wells across this period and burn fires you have to have holy fires burning to get rid of evil creatures and of course drinking partying and all that malarkey now on the next day which is the 24th which is may day uh, not may day sorry so here's another thing do not be confused like i just got confused between may day and midsummer may day is the first it's at the beginning of may and midsummer is the um the 24th saint john the baptist day now here we go on the 24th you've parted the night before you've had your bonfires and you may have engaged in a bit of love divination because that can be done in different places in different locations around the world done on different days uh, but we'll get to that in a minute so basically this day you've got to wake up there's a big maypole which obviously is the phallic symbol it's meant to represent a penis and all that and you all get around it and dance around the giant penis and there'll be garlands everybody's got garlands in their hair there'll be fates and parades and festivals there'll be eating there'll be music there'll be drink it's a day to be in the countryside to do all those things we do historically in the West um, and, you know, in our Western culture. And of course, it's a day uh, to be close to water as well. And of course, the maypole and to relax. Now, the love divination is simply um, women in ancient times would sometimes make things like dumb cakes, they were called. Uh, or salt cakes and they would do different versions of different spells to find out who their husband was going to be so if you're going to do any divination magic this is the time to do it over these two days to find out who your husband is going to be in the future for you ladies out there i'm not sure if it was reversed for the gentleman um but then after so you've had the summer solstice now the now i think personally it's my theory the summer solstice was actually Midsummer is practiced three days after because if you think about it, Christmas is practiced three days after the winter solstice, and Midsummer is practiced three days after the summer solstice. So, the idea of this, and um, what I've heard in the past from my research, is that when it's at its zenith, its height, you can't tell at which point it starts going down. It only takes about three days for the ancients to realize, ah, okay, it's lowering in sky every day, and they can clock it there. The beginning of darkness is started. Quick, get the fires going. So, three days after the zenith, people in the ancient times, however they mapped it out with sticks and um, uh, shadows would be like ah okay now it is now we celebrate let's go Poof. let's get the fires going so that's there now uh but these celebrations don't end till about the 29th now of course it's not celebrating every day but you also get a celebration on the 29th where you're technically meant to bless or christen or do stuff with apples so your apple crop is about to start so i've got some apple trees in the garden and you can see them have started there's apple trees in the local hospital that we all go and take apples from and they're all starting to grow so now on the 29th of june you're meant to bless your apple trees now this is similar to what sailing which happens after christmas or around christmas uh, where you literally will bless the apples again to for the next crop with um cider and apple cider and all that so this is your midsummer. It's a time to be outside. It's a time to be close to water. It's a time to celebrate around a maypole. 
because your maypole is up for May, if not all year round. So you've got maypole dancing uh, at the beginning. And you've got maypole dancing now. Uh, it's your time to remember John the Baptist. Wheels will come because they celebrate the turning of the earth, uh, the sun and the earth and everything going in cyclical forms. So sometimes you probably get like things like the cheese rolling festivals, wheel rolling festivals. But the idea of wheels here is classic for the idea of the sun. So you need sun emblems and sun wheels. Of course, um, which is controversial at the moment, is the swastika, which uh, was actually a sun symbol. It's found in Hindu temples. It's found... Um, in England, it's found in Ireland. It's a symbol that I think it's even been found in America and it represents the sun. So when you see a swash sticker, don't be like, oh, Nazis. First of all, there's different types and you're looking for the ones that celebrate the sun. The Nazis took one and obviously if you get a red background or a white circle, it's obvious what the intention is. But don't jump to the conclusion that a swash sticker immediately means Nazism. It doesn't. It genuinely means the sun from Indo-European cultures. So be careful of that. So a lot of the times people have now changed to wheels. You know what I mean? Because obviously going around flying Nazi flags you know, or swash stickers. People are going to assume they're Nazi flags, but they are not. Um... OK, so that's what you got to do. And then by the 29th, you'll be blessing your apples and like, come on, apples, we need the apples because they'll last you. Apples are amazing. You can get them coming out right and they get right towards the end of autumn. And they just like it's like three months of vitamins for you. Um, so I have been doing my berries in the garden. So I get the berries, then the apples will come in. It takes six months of the year. You pretty much got free food totally free food you know for things like that which i'm doing right okay guys that's it as i say i've done my research from different places um i really enjoyed the english year if you enjoy what i do support me obviously a lot of the times i do samurai but i do do some western culture stuff so how to be a modern samurai 10 steps to finding your power and achieving success so get yourself a copy of that my name is antoine cummings anthony cummings so enjoy that and i'll speak to you in the next video oh,